cowboy style of life is just different from, you know, living in a big city and having a suit and tie and, and uh, you know, we're all about Jesus here, but we wear our cowboy hats and our boots. And we have a heart for the youth in college here in Weatherford. We do buckouts and bull rides and team ropings and calf ropings and anything to do with arena events. We have a ride every uh, third Monday night of every month. And uh, tonight we're going to just buck some bulls. We're going to have a little word. Uh, the rule is you need to be here by 7 o'clock and then we'd say Jesus paid your fees and, and you get to ride for free. It's just like heaven. If you don't accept Jesus, uh, before the gates close, then you don't get in, and it's the same thing. We're going to look at uh, Mark, the 10th chapter tonight. Then in the arena, it's simply, uh, it's time to just get real. That was a good rush. Get on the next one. We spend time with the kids. We don't just uh, get here and disciple them and, t and preach at them. We work behind the bucking shoots with them. Other than that, uh, it's, it's church. Hey, it's good to have y'all. Welcome to Silverado Cowboy Church, where Jesus, King of the Cowboys, and everybody's welcome. The reason we say that is because we want you to know that God is no respecter of persons. And we are glad that you are here today. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, when we receive the word, it's Jesus called it the washing of the water of the word. Uh, Paul also later on talked about the washing of the water of the word. I want you to receive the word today and to be able to put it into your life and, and make use of it. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That rightly dividing the word of truth means where you apply it to your life. I want you to receive the word today, be able to apply it to your life, and remember that God loves you. I'll talk to you after this broadcast. So, uh, Zane, if you'll call up Pastor. And so, I have not spoke to him since he did church this morning in Virginia, so we'll See how it goes. Praise the Lord. So while she's doing that, after directly after church in the uh, Sunday School Fellowship Room, uh, we're going to have a meeting for Harvest Festival. And so if you can help be a part of, whether it's through donations or work in a booth or something, I sent out an email earlier, please come into that room after church and we won't keep you long. Or we will. You gonna keep them long? Good morning, brought up Cowboy Church and family. Good morning. How is everybody? Good. Hallelujah. Do you got a picture Good. of him, Zane? Let's see. So we do have some visitors here today. Want to welcome you for joining us. Nope. Okay. No. Did you find a picture? No, nope, but go ahead and no talk. No picture, huh? We know you're. We know well, you're real. Well, you probably put up a picture with no cowboy hat on or something. Anyway. It's all right. Go ahead. Up oh, there he is. Ah, uh, things are great. The sun's finally shining here. It's been uh, drizzling for three days. Praise um, the Lord. We had a great church service this morning. Um, a, a guy that. Uh, I don't know if I know him did the music today because Caroline wasn't here. Um, oh, actually, Caroline. I did the music. I we know that. And uh, I've been at uh, Simmons Arena in Wirtz, Virginia. And uh, no relation, just uh, as his wife put it, brothers in Christ. Amen. Um, the... Uh, great participation at church and and of course I love it because it goes across the sound system and I uh, I even set it up wrong this morning and it still worked. Praise uh, the Lord. So I guess that that was good. I finally realized I plugged my sound into the 
the wrong hole, but it worked. Um, so that was good. Praise the Lord. Don't let me touch the soundboard, Scott. We, uh, I talked about worship this morning, and you know, and I, I realized that I've been hung up on worship for several weeks and maybe a couple of months now, but we're, uh, we're deter, we're de- defined by our worship. The reason that defines us is because that defines our day. It defines our relationship. Uh, it defines who we are. And tithes and offerings are part of that that worship. Um, I have talked about this before. You know, if you'll withhold your pocketbook, you'll withhold anything from God. And, and God just wants everything. God wants to, to be a part of your life. He wants to be a part of who you are. And, and He wants to have all of you. But He's not going to take all of you. He wants you to give it to Him. And Amen. so... Remember that as we worship uh, today and as we look going forward, that we always are cognizant of the fact that, hey, I am a worshiper because I love God, not just because we sing good songs or we sing songs that I like or I don't like or I have an opinion about, but it's, it's from the heart of worship. And knowing that from the heart of worship is who you really are and who God wants to be in your life and how he wants to participate in your life. Father, I thank you today for this church. I thank you for the commitment that each one has to you and the love that you've shown towards them and the love that they show towards you because they they just love you and, and you define who we are. You define who each one of us are by how we worship you and how we're committed. And Father, we just want to remind you that we love you because you first loved us. And we thank you for that. We don't take it lightly. We thank you for each and everything that you do in us. And Father, I give you glory and honor and power in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Hey, just in case Kathleen doesn't say this later, Jesus loves you and so do we. Amen. See you after a while. I'll see you Wednesday night. See you Wednesday night. He'll be home later. He'll be home later. So as we continue to worship, I just want to pray over the tithes and offerings today. Father, we thank you for your abundant provision and everything that we have that you are our provider, Father, not our jobs, not the people who are here supporting the church, Father, but we know that all of the blessings come from heaven, Father, and we know that you watch over us more than we do our own selves, and we just give you that honor today, Father, and thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's continue to worship. All right, well, turn over to Deuteronomy 5, and saying I'm going to be speaking out of New King James today. Hallelujah. Do you have anything to be grateful for today? Amen. Well, let's just take a moment and thank God. Amen. Each one of us has something. I know that we've that this week he has abundantly either shown himself big or is in a place where you are in a place of abundant blessing from our Father. Amen. And maybe that you you're so blessed you just need to thank him for it, right? So Father, we just we glorify you today. I thank you, Father, for your direction, for your wisdom in my own life, Father, that when I ask and have asked this week for direction and circumstances, that you have been quick to respond and answer. And I thank you, Father, as I draw closer to you, that I feel your presence even deeper. May I never leave that presence today. And I just speak over each person that's here today, Father, in this fellowship, that as the word goes forth, that you will give them the word that they need today, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, hallelujah. 
So the word, the word, the word. David always asks me, what are you talking about today? And I always tell him, the word. Right? Because if we're not talking about the word, you all should go home. Because what's the point in coming if you're not going to hear the word? And that's just what we believe. And so for our visitors, a lot of people always ask, what is Cowboy Church? Well, it's different at different Cowboy Churches. But here, we believe that the whole word is for us today is the day it was wrote. And we've got a bunch of cowboys. No. <laughs> Pastor's Cowboy. Cowboy Ministries is our, the foundation and the building block of all the ministry that we have done and do in the creation of Silverado Cowboy Church. And so uh, through cowboys who wanted to have ministry and ministry available to them. And so, you know, God just keeps opening those doors and opening those doors, whatever area of ministry that he moves us into, whether it's been classic cars or motorcycle ministry, uh, food ministry. You know, I like food ministry, right? So we're having, we're having chicken fried steak on Wednesday night, by the way, just in case you want to know. Anyway, uh, for our visitors, we have Wednesday night uh, Bible study. And so dinner, 6.30 to 7, and then 7 to about 8. Is, is the Bible study, and so uh, we are in a new study right now, and uh, I know John and Gloria are on vacation, praise the Lord, they're at a lake somewhere with their boat and their camper, and prob I'm so envious, and a fire going this week, right, as it's going to cool off, and so, you know, one of the things that, you know, John talked about, and Gloria and I talked about, was that, you know, John told me and that, He's lived his whole life, and uh, I don't know how old John is. We won't talk about it. He probably don't care, but he's older than me. And so he says, I've lived my whole life below where I should be. He said, you know, understanding that, you know, when Jesus walked the earth and when Jesus died and what he did on the cross, he finished his work. And that work is finished. And he did it for us. And he did it for him. And he's been trying to get something that he's already been given. And this is how Wednesday night Bible study came. And he sat under a ministry that, that, that stirred this up inside of him. That, um, and we do. We live in a world, and I've, been, I've done it myself, continually asking God for something he's already given me. Amen. And so it's just a matter of understanding that, and that's what the Word on Wednesday nights is walking us through, is understanding what that is that He's already done for us. And uh, walking in His presence, walking in the finished work of Christ. I made a note now. He, he said that uh, spending wasted days trying to get something he already had, he realized how many times he'd done that. And, you know, this only gets complicated by the turmoil of the world that we're in today. But, you know, Satan continually casts a shadow to try and keep you away from the truth of the word. All the time. But we live under the shadow of the Almighty. So his shadow can't even enter into our presence. Amen? But it's understanding that. So when I said it first, y'all, you know, I... I did too. I agreed. I, the Lord showed me that, that, the, that Satan is doing this. I thought, Lord, that's right. And he said, no, you live under my shadow, the shadow of the Almighty. One of those things that he's done for us, that if we realize and we walk it out every day, how much grander, I was trying to think of how grand, you know, it is. People talk about heaven and we've had a lot of people that are celebrating in heaven that are close to us, and we talk about how, how wonderful it's going to be. Why don't we talk about how wonderful it is in this time that God has given us? Amen? So in Deuteronomy 5.4, and I said words, how important are they? Your words? Other people's words? God's words? Satan's words? And the words in the Bible? And this is what you really want to think about. How important are they? How important are our words? They are so important. We have learned that, that, that when we talk about how horrible things are, how depressed we are, how, how bad this planet is that we live in, 
How important are those words? And they set, they set a precedence um, of our day. You don't want to get up and say, oh, man, today I got, oh, I got so much work to do. It's just going to be so hard. I don't want to get out of bed. It's horrible. That isn't how you want your word, your words to be. So other words, other people's words, how important are they? How do you let them affect you? You know, we, we talk about this a lot in relationship to, um, uh, we were talking, I don't remember who it was David was talking to the other day. We were in a conversation, though, and um, we've talked about how, as husband and wife, that we want to come into agreement with our words. We don't want to be in disagreement with our words, because that, that doesn't look sound or work out very well, does it? Not getting an amen on that one. That's okay. Y'all be safe there. It's okay. We know. That's right. But other people's words, how do they affect you? So when, when somebody says something that my spirit, when, when God, that's not how I created it to be. No, this isn't the way that it is. I speak out with my words on that. And so, you know, when somebody says to me, oh, well, it looks like you've, you know, you're, you're going the wrong direction or, you know, that, you know, you, you, you don't, you don't, you don't, whatever. And I'll always stand up and say, no, because my God is my provider. Amen. Or my God, or the word says, and we, it is written. That's right. Of course, like Fonda says, you would need to know what is written. Amen. And so, um, God's words, though, in Deuteronomy 5.4, here, uh, Moses, you know, we're at the mountaintop, right? We're at the, at the burning bush, the flaming experience, the clouds, the glory of God, and the Lord talked, and he said, the Lord talked with you. So he's talking to everybody at the camp, right? The Lord talked with you face-to-face -face on the mountain, verse 4, sorry, Zane, um, on the mountain from the midst of the fire, and he said, I stood between the Lord and you at that time to declare to you the word of the Lord. For you were afraid because of the fire, and you did not go up to the mountain. They could have gone with him. They could have all gone up, and they could have all experienced the glory of the Lord. And too many times in our own lives and in people's lives that we love so much, the circumstances that stand before them seem so overwhelming that just approaching the throne with it, they almost get, it's like you, you, you just don't do it because you're frozen in that place. You may cry out to the Lord, but not in faith, but in fear or sadness. And yes, he does listen to us. But in approaching it, he says, you did not go up to the mountain. And he said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage, and you shall have no other gods before me. And so as you, we move forward into Deuteronomy and through 22, as I was studying, these words that he spoke to the assembly was with a great voice. And it says, God spoke to them audibly. It wasn't, you know, they saw what was going on. Because I've seen, we've all seen the Charlton Heston right, re-accountants of, you know, the Ten Commandments, right, and so, oh, maybe not, but, uh, you know, and you, and, you, and you picture that, and I did too as a child, I didn't, I didn't picture it that they had the opportunity to go with them, I thought they was all just waiting at the camp, and, and Moses was the only person that could go up there, he was the only person because, you know, what it was, but that wasn't the case, I am not the only person that approaches the throne, you approach the throne, it's what Jesus gave us, right, that now we approach the throne in his name. We talk to the Father, but the Father still talks to us. I think about, I was thinking about the last time I audibly heard him. It's always inside with me, and, and it's not to say I haven't ever heard a word, it's not something, but what's the last word that you were given that changed your life? Anybody? It doesn't have to be from God, just anything. A word that changed your life. Wendy. I woke up about a week and a half ago. Let's see if I'm approaching the. I woke up about. There you are. I woke up about a week and a half ago, and uh, the scripture is, I mean, 
hear the words of the Lord. I could hear him saying, and it was Hebrews 4.12, 4.12 or 12.4, go look it up. <laughs> One of the two, about that the word, how it divides the spirit and the soul oh, yes. and the joint in the marrow and how that word was meant what I never understood it. I mean, I've understood it to mean a lot of things, but in this instance, it was the word divides your spirit and your soul, your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. It divides your, um, it tells you what you're hearing. It tells you the truth. Is this from your spirit? Or is this from your mind, your will, and your emotions? So and were you thinking about something that that word you needed asleep. that word for? I woke up that morning to hearing that. And so how did that a word, how do you feel that word applied to what is going on in your life? Because it also told me that joint and marrow meant life and death. Life is in the blood. And it's dividing. That word is telling you the truth. And it's explaining to you the wisdom of God versus what in the situation that you're in. Amen. Well, it says that life and death are in the power of the tongue, right? I remember when I heard I was, I was, I was alone, and this has been a while ago, and the Lord told me that um, I could get married and not be alone anymore. And I remember that, you know, because I've been trying, I'd, you know, I've been kind of dating, you know, sort of thing, that kind of, you know, remember that kind of dating and uh and then I just was yeah what's that Sherry hit and miss oh, that's a good thing I kept swinging it's a good thing I swung a few away hallelujah anyway and so um but I remember that I remember that so clearly I was sitting on my back porch I was sitting outside and I was crying and my kids were in the house and I was I was alone and I didn't want to be alone and I wanted a godly man. He said he's going to send me a godly man. You know? And so I remember that. And that's why I said it doesn't, you know, it can be a word, a word out of the word. But something that, that really, and I know each and every one of us have something. And nobody wants me to come stick the microphone in front of you. But if you've got something, I'd love you to share it. Because people need to hear about your experiences. Amen? Your experiences in the word are as important as Jeremiah's experiences, as Moses' experiences, as jo Joseph's experiences, because it's the, it's the things that we experience today that the people that we are ministering to need. Hallelujah. We put the word in and then we give the word out. And so this is what, you know, and so he's trying to share with them that the Lord has come to them as we're sharing with the world that the Lord is here with us today. And he, he is speaking to us and he's speaking to you and he has all the answers and it doesn't have to be difficult. Praise the Lord. So what do you want to do? Worship the Lord, I heard someone say. Where are you going? How are you going to get there? You wake up in the morning and you're just like, well, praise the Lord. Finances are in my bank. Somebody's in the kitchen cooking for me. Somebody's doing my laundry. The washing machine isn't broken. You know, those little things, the daily things. You know, and so what do you want to do? And this is something that, I, that really the Lord really spoke to me. And my spirit cried out to a couple months ago. What am I doing? Is this, if this were the end of my life today, would I be satisfied with what I'm doing? And my answer was no. And so it was my move. And so that is the title of the message. This message today is, it's your move. Jesus has done all he's going to do on the cross. God has supplied and has provision for everything. You know, God has prepared everything that we need. He prepared everything from the beginning of time that we would need. He has prepared for us, even with Jesus. Amen? And I'm getting ahead of myself. But you know, he planned just in case y'all messed up. Or they all, 
Adam and Eve. Whoever, right? You want to blame it on today. Um, he has a provision. He has, he has a provision and a preparation for you to move forward and out of and around whatever obstacles are standing before what you want to do and how you're going to do it if you're stuck there. Well, I looked at uh, the finished work of the cross, and I've heard a couple messages from the pulpit on that and just stirred me in that. And I think about, you know, he finished, but then he gave, he gave him a task, didn't he? Didn't he tell the disciples? He gave them something to do, along with this life they live. And so, you know, there, there is a work. We're finishing his mandate. We're supposed to be anyway. I don't like starting over. I don't even think about things as starting over. I may be starting something new, but I like to finish things. How many projects you got left unfinished? How many ideas have you had that you haven't ever started? Are you prepared for the end of the project or your life? However you took that statement I had out there. They both kind of, they both come into play. You know, God made preparations for everything, and he's just waiting to see what we're going to do with it because he's already prepared everything that we need to do it. So it's your move. Hebrews 12, 1 through 2 says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, I like to stretch that out, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So, I don't, you know, no, who likes to run? Jaden. Jaden's up there on the, on the soundboard. Jaden likes to run. Anybody else in here like to run? No, you know... I don't like to run. Running makes me sweat. It makes me tired. It doesn't, it's not something I enjoy. It's not like, you know, but that's not my calling. I don't get up in the morning and go for a jog. I probably should go for a walk, but I don't go for a jog or I don't run. But the race that they're talking about here is sometimes how we look at the things that stand before us. It looks like, uh, I get, you get up in the morning, you're like, uh, you know what, I just don't want to do that today, Lord. We're, we're going to work on that tomorrow. And that becomes the endurance that we need. It becomes like a race because you put things off and you put things off and you put things off and it just makes things harder instead of easier. He says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So the word, the word is... is he wrote it all for us. When people say that there's not an, a, 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 there's not an owner's manual or directions on raising a child, I beg to differ. There is. It's in the Word. You know, oh, Lord, this wife you gave me. If somebody could just help me, you know. And so they come out with this book, Men Are From Somewhere, and Somebody's From Mars, and Somebody's From Venus. You know what? You don't need none of that stuff. You just need the Word. Because the Word and relationships on how to have a good, solid relationship is in here. And so, you know, everything I know I need is in here. The moment I reach out and ask for advice... I can get in so much trouble. It can be good advice. I think I give really good advice. But, you know, you just best make sure, you know, that more than likely if somebody approaches me, and I'm just telling you this, so the next time you approach me, this is what I'm thinking. The Lord's already told you what to do. Why are you talking to me? And if you didn't go to the Lord with it first, you shouldn't be talking to me anyway, right? Right? Go to the Lord. Now the Lord will confirm things through people. So where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. He says, you know, such a cl this cloud of witnesses that we were talking about wasn't the cloud of witnesses that I'm talking about. And so, um, and so, you know, it's okay. It's okay to, you know, get some confirmation. But you know, almost always get confirmation anyway. 
the Lord, the Lord will show me something, I'll know, I'll go to the Lord with, with, with something or some problem uh, that I've got myself into and trying to figure out how to get out of it and, uh, you know, ask and repent first and then asking for grace and mercy. But then it's my move. It's still my move. Because sometimes there are consequences in getting yourself out of stuff, some things that we have to endure. Bad, bad business, bad financial moves can be one of those. Um, but God will prepare a way for you and he'll hold you through it and he'll bring you through it. Just, it's your move. You've got to keep going forward. It's not going to go away. James 1, 21 through 27. In um, 121, it says that therefore lay aside the filthiness and the overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save our souls. God has implanted the word in us every time. So this message you hear today and the message you heard last week, and I don't know if you listened to several messages this week, it, it came into us. It came into you. You can choose to ignore it. You can choose to not pay no mind to it, but it's in there. And once it's in there, I thank God for it because when I need it, he'll bring it back is what the word says. He'll bring that back. I don't have to do a lot of searching. He'll bring it back to me. And I'm not real good at addresses all the time. I'll call David. Hey, where's this in scripture? And he can just whip them scriptures out. He knows exactly where it is. I know it's in there and that's what's important. Hallelujah. But be doers of the word, verse 22, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. And so have you ever said, somebody will tell you something? Revelation. You know, like Wendy was talking this morning about what the Lord woke up. And she, the Lord's probably shown you that before. You know? Or, and, and people will talk about things that have, that out of the word that's happened or things they've done. You'll go, you know, I've heard that. I heard that before. I heard somebody minister on that. Probably five or six or 20 times. Uh, David will tell you he loves to repeat some stuff because it's just good. And so we'll hear, we'll hear the same thing. Like he's never told us, huh, Toy? David, David will tell you something here from the pulpit like you've never heard it before. And you've heard it, I don't know, let me think how many Sundays in a year, for how many years we've all known each other, right? Yeah. <laughs> but and it is, and it's exciting to him because everything that the Lord has done for us should be that exciting. It is an old this is an old word. This is a fresh anointed word for us. Amen? It needs to be that refreshing that's inside of us. And so, you know, we hear a lot of word. But James is reminding us here, and I love how James says this through the scriptures, through verse 27. For he who observes, I'm sorry, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in the mirror, which is the same thing I said where I said, you know, somebody will say it from the pulpit and, or you'll listen to it on the radio or you hear somebody say it on television and you'll think, yeah, I've heard that before. And, uh, you know, that didn't really, that really didn't work for me or that didn't apply to me. The word, when you hear the word, always applies. It may be for you, it may be for somebody else that you're supposed to share it with. It may be for both, usually so. For he who observes himself goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he, and I bolded verse 25, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Amen. Amen. Say, that's me. That's me. That's right. You should always, when you hear good stuff and the word inside you, you, you can interrupt the pastor if you want to, but just say it, man. That's me. That's for me. That word's for me. And then when you hear that other stuff, you go, oh, that word's not for me. Not in my house. That's right. You've got to talk to that stuff. I love how Gloria used to say that. She said she'd hear stuff on the television about the, the flu, and, and now you hear things about all kinds of stuff, and you have to say, not my house. Not, right? Because they talk about, yeah, that's right. Is that Brady back there? Yes. Not in my house. Hallelujah. If anyone thinks, verse 26, he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart. This one's religion is useless. 
pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father, and I put this one in red, to visit the orphans and the widows and their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. The world is watching us. And, you know, David and I talk about this all the time because, you know, everybody that you run into every day, they are so nice and so sweet and so pleasant. And, you know, you go to a restaurant and, I mean, they, they never forget to fill your tea and they always get there quick and your food comes out fast and you go get your car worked on and it's always perfect and it's always cheap, right? You know, and, and they fix it right every time. Hallelujah! <laughs> That's right, Brady. Hallelujah, right? But when those things don't happen that way, how do we look? When we look in the mirror and we see what people see and how we react, man, we're all, I mean, I'm, he'll, he'll look at me, like he'll say something, he'll look at me, he'll go, hmm, I might not have handled that quite right, huh? This is how I should be looking. Not, yeah, yeah, you shouldn't have talked like that. Yeah, you shouldn't have done that. Yeah, you shouldn't have been. No, try to bridle my tongue. Because he already knows. And that's why I said earlier, we know, we know. But we got to get a hold of this stuff sometimes, right? This stuff being, you know, this stuff. Hallelujah. And, you know, in, in some footnotes that I was reading on James, it's important to listen to what God's word says in 22 through 25, but it's much more important to obey it and do what it says. We can measure the effectiveness uh, of our Bible study uh, time by the effect it has on our behavior and our attitudes. Do you put into action what you've been studying? In verse 25, you know, it seems a paradox that the law could give us freedom. Because we we've been talking a lot about that, right? The law and grace and mercy and the covenant and the law and the Ten Commandments, as you mentioned earlier, and how, you know, the law was restricted, but the law gives us freedom. And I understand it, but God's law offers us a true reflection of our sinful condition and gives us an opportunity to ask for God's forgiveness. You can read more about that in Romans 7, 7 through 8, where I was studying too. As Christians, we're saved by God's grace and salvation frees us from sin's control. We are not under the control of sin. When people said we were all sinners, I'll go, yep, I was. I am not. Right? We are not. We're not supposed to be, are we? We are not. Of course, this... Uh, as believers, we're free to live as God created us to live. In chapter 3, it goes more on, um, or the notes, yeah, in 126 in chapter 3, talks more about controlling the tongue. And as I read more through that, um, no matter how spiritually, um, no matter how spiritual we may think we are, we could all do a better job at controlling what we say in difficult situations. If you could finish one thing today, what would it be? If you could leave here, well, unless you have something to do here, and you could finish it today, what would it be? Anybody? Nobody? Everybody's got all their stuff done? One thing that you would, that if you could, and it would just be done today, what would it be? No, nope. just something. Hey! Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. It's like that self-cleaning oven. Yeah, I got that button. Yeah, doesn't work. Still takes that off stuff. Hallelujah. Paying off your bills? Losing weight? Getting in shape? Spending more time with your family? Clean your house? Clean your garage? Buy, 
hey, I got a garage. <laughs> it ain't on you. It's all on me. Buy a new car? I don't know, you know, that one thing that you've been kind of wanting or working on or, you know, saving for or waiting for, right? Hallelujah. To keep ourselves from letting the world corrupt us, James said in uh, verse 27, we need to commit ourselves to Christ, Christ ethically and morally, right, in the system, not the world's. We're not adapt to the world's value system, which is based on the things that we hear and see today, whether it be world events, um, sickness, um, the power that we think somebody might have, pleasure. True faith means nothing if, we're, if we do not commit our way to the Lord, because it is us in it. The key to our thoughts and the way to work through all the obstacles are in James. So turn back to, I'm just trying to think of where I was, uh, 1 through 6, James 1 through 6. 1, 1, 1, 1 through 6. James says, um, and he's talking to the 12 tribes, which were scattered at this point. And so um, he's talking to them all in this letter, and he says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let the patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Amen. Wisdom and knowledge and direction, the Lord will always, because he's prepared the path ahead of you. He already knows what you need. He knows how to get you there. He knows what you need to do. And so when I ask the question, what do you want to do? So a lot of times, you know, I'll go, well, Lord, what do we want to do? I know what I want to do. I want to stay home, bake, play in the garden, right, play with my puppies. But I always make sure and ask the Lord, what do you want? to do today it's like calling your best friend and going out to play you remember as kids well you get up in the morning so i don't know maybe i guess kids still get to do this i'd get up it'd be you know summer break and i'd be like just i'd get my breakfast and i had to get my clothes on and i had to you know somewhat resemble brushing my hair and brushing my teeth and because out the door i was going to go and i was going to go play with my friends right and so that's how I look like with God. I get up, kind of get myself together, and then I call on God, and I go, what are we going to do today? What are we? Because everything that God has to, for us to do is fun. And then he includes people like you to do it with together. Amen? Amen? I don't, and, and we're all busy people. And so I'm not speaking to anybody or anything about this because Alice and I talk about this a lot um, you know, I just like, I just go places. I don't got to go with people, you know, but um, I invite myself. I hear somebody's doing something fun. I'll invite, can I invite myself to go with you to do that? You know, and so, um, and I try to invite people because I know a lot of times there's a lot of people that don't, don't do that. But sometimes I feel like, um, you know, I could like be too much for y'all. So, you know, I just, you know, because uh, I like to do a lot of different things. And even David, you know, he doesn't always like to do what I like to do. And, you know, I don't always like to do what David likes to do, and I'm glad he has friends <laughs> to go do those things with. I tell him all the time he needs more friends <laughs> to go do some of that stuff with. We all need friends, right? And so if you ever want to go do something and you don't want to do it alone, Call me. I'd love to go, but I'm not always going to call someone because, you know, I realize we're all busy or we're all doing stuff, but that isn't going to stop me from doing the things I love to do. And that's how I think that God is with us. He says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. So obviously he's not talking about, oh, let's go look for trouble, right? But what he's saying is when things happen and you can look at yourself and you can go, you know what? I did okay. I didn't yell at the person who cut me off and issued all kinds of sign language. You know, I was just driving down the road, saying I'm sorry, you know, for not paying attention or whatever, and all the rest of the stuff. How is my attitude and my experiences? But let him ask in faith, 
verse 6. With no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. So, you know, decide what you want to do and do it. Clean your freezer. It'll make you feel better. And then it'll be done, and you won't have to think about it anymore. Amen? So in closing today, ultimately in the end, it all really just comes down to this. Revelation 22, verse 12. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every one of you according to your work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right? That's right. He's bringing rewards. First Peter uh, uh, 1.16 says, It is written, Be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who is without partiality, judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear. So just be nice. Do what you know you're supposed to do. Don't be ugly, right, to people. Be nice. Even when people are ugly, those are my various trials, just telling you, when people are ugly. Being nice, you know, and I feel better about it. And it's not easy. I'm not standing here saying, oh, I'm always so good at this because I am not. I'll tell you what, inside my brain, I'm repenting all the time. But I'm trying. I'm getting better, and I am trying, and trying is important. Knowing that you were not redeemed with recovery, corruptible things like silver or gold from aimless conduct received in the traditions of your father, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed or foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Amen? Amen? Amen. We have got to make sure that we love our Father with all our heart, all our mind, and all our soul. We have to make sure that every day that we realize that we're on a path and God's got the answers to the whole thing. You're not in it alone. And if you've gotten off track, just get back in. It's that simple. You don't got to do a bunch of stuff. You don't got to work a bunch of solutions. You don't got to get all your bills paid off and figure out how to get out of the mess. You just step back in and say, Lord, I love you. Help me. Amen? Let's stand. Praise the Lord. You know, in the light of adversity, seeing it through to the end, overcoming Whatever it is that we're dealing with day in and day out only, only leads us to even greater things in the Lord. Hallelujah. You don't need a new word. You don't need a new church, unless you're looking for one. In which case, we hope you enjoyed the service today, and you'll come back and hear Pastor. Um, and that the Lord did speak to you. We know this, and we tell people this all the time. We are obviously not the only game on the block. Right? There are a lot of churches out here, and we know that God's got a place for each and every person. And um, we are always honored for those that are here with us today that are part of Silverado Cowboy Church and Cowboy Church Ministries and um, the um, path that God has us all on together. You do need to be a doer of the word. Amen? You need to trust God, and you need to believe that Jesus completed the work on the cross and that the plan that he has for you, the work that is set before you, you can finish it. And you can finish it with great joy and you can stand before your father in heaven one day with the assurance that he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your word, Father. I thank you for the opportunity to stand here today and share what you have given me to share with so many people. I pray that um, I was worthy of that, Father, not in your sight, but in the delivery of what you told me to say. I hope that I made you proud, and I hope that I will make you proud in everything that I do this week. 
I ask for wisdom, direction, and I thank you for your grace and mercy and your divine intervention with my tongue whenever I need it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I hope you've listened to the word uh, during this service so that you can have your life changed. You're, you'll see how the DNA of your entire life is about to change. Also, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've never made him the Lord of your life. Paul says this in Romans 10, 8 through 10. But what does it say? The word is near you and it's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it's very simple to do that. All I have to really do is say, Jesus is the Lord of my life, and I believe that God raised him from the dead. That's exactly what Paul said. Many times we have people pray a prayer uh, so that we know that we've drawn a line in the sand and we've let everybody know that we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. So I want to do that with you right now so that you can literally say, today is the day and whatever time it is, wherever you're at watching, you'll know that you've had a change in your life. So say this with me. You can bow your head and close your eyes, or you can keep your eyes open. Uh, and uh, I, I always love what uh, Oop Schroner, who is a prophet of God, said. He said, if you're drowning in a swimming pool at the Holiday Inn, you wouldn't want anybody to close their eyes. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're literally drowning in a swimming pool of sin someplace. So say this with me. Father, I know that you sent Jesus to die for me. I confess my sin. I ask you to forgive me of them. And Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. And I commit today that I will live for you the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, if you just did that, then what you just did is you invited Jesus Christ to live in your life, to be the Lord of your life, and you're going to see a complete change in every area of your entire life right now. If you've watched this broadcast, you also know that uh, what we've talked about at different times uh, through different broadcasts is, is finances. If we, the Bible tells us in Luke 6.38 that if we give, that he'll give back to us, press down, shaken together and running over to make room for more. Then it says, uh, right after that, and this is Luke 6, 38. Then it says, whatever measure you use in giving, large or small, it will be used to measure what is given back to you. So if you become a covenant partner with us today, there's many things that we do for outreaches here out of this church and out of the ministry. Not only here in Weatherford, Texas, but all over the country and all over the world. We uh, have rodeo events right here in the arena where we have, uh, he paid your fees. Simply means that nobody pays to, to enter. They come, we have a devotional, it becomes an outreach opportunity. And we do that in rodeo arenas, horse show arenas, and roping arenas all over the United States. We drill wells and have uh, crusades in Nigeria, Cameroon, Togo, Uganda, and Tanzania. And by doing each one of those, uh, you become, and becoming a covenant partner with this ministry, you become a part of those outreaches. You take part in the reward in the end time, as well as you get back pressed down, shaken together, and running over to make room for more. Because you're a covenant partner, and this is good ground. Bible tells us in another place he gives back. Uh, this is in uh, Mark, the 10th chapter. It tells us that he gives back to us some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. Well, this ground has been worked. 
it has, has been fertilized, and, and I would expect a hundredfold return on that. So there's a uh, website that you've seen. Do two things. One, if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, let us know at that website address, and we'll send you some information so that you'll be able to walk that walk and succeed in life in your new Christian life. Also, if you give, there's a donate button right there. If you press that donate button and give, that seed gets planted into good ground and it comes back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Kathleen and I pray every day over every partner of this ministry. So I want to make sure that we're able to pray for you and, and let us know the things that you may have need of in life so that we can bring them before the Father. Have a great day. Remember, Jesus loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. cowboy style of life is just different from you know living in a big city and having a suit and tie and and uh, you know we're all about Jesus here but we wear our cowboy hats and our boots and we have a heart for the youth and college here in Weatherford we do buck outs and bull rides and team ropings and calf ropings and anything to do with arena events we have a ride every uh, third Monday night of every month and uh, tonight we're gonna just buck some bulls. We're going to have a little word. Uh, the rule is you need to be here by 7 o'clock, and then we'd say Jesus paid your fees, and, and you get to ride for free. It's just like heaven. If you don't accept Jesus uh, before the gates close, then you don't get in, and it's the same thing. We're going to look at uh, Mark, the 10th chapter tonight. Then in the arena, it's simply uh, it's time to just get real. That was a good rush. Get on the next one. We spend time with the kids. We don't just uh, get here and disciple them and, t and preach at them. We work behind the bucking sheets with them. Other than that, uh, it's, it's church.